Hi, uh, it's time for another math easy solution. Turn to discuss. Uh, well, basically, I'm going to revisit the area of a sector of a circle, which I proved in my earlier video, and these are the notes for it. But I'm going to revisit it using definite integrals only. Basically, I just illustrated the area of a sector of a circle like this is just simply a equals uh, one half uh, times r r squared times theta, where theta is the angle, r is the radius. And basically going through this proof, so make sure to watch my earlier video, watch this video, I put the link in the description below. And basically I show the way that I worked it out, I for the area I broke it up into two, two areas like this, one of them has this arc around, this one's a triangle, so the triangle we I got this one, and then for this one uh, I wrote it like this, A2 for the second area is integral from r cos theta to r of r squared minus x squared all square root dx. And in this proof I use trig substitution for integrals and I use x equals a sine theta and then we got all the way down here and solved it and then this part is where I, I, I solved it using a in, no, an indefinite integral. So then I wrote it all like this so I was uh, using that substitution to plug it in and then solve it, got r squared cos squared, yeah, r squared times integral of cos squared theta, I mean u du. Plugged in this integral from it I solved earlier. And then finally, uh, after solving all this, and then I would switch to variables, convert to the x variable, and then plug it inside this uh, this definite integral, I mean indefinite integral, because we have this constant. See, there's no, uh, we're not integrating it from anything here. And then I, I solved it using that x variable. So that's the way I did it before. And I'm going to show you how we could get to the exact same answer by using definite integral the whole way. So, yes, yeah, so let's just go to where just before we started using the uh, the indefinite integral. Uh, the, that method there. So let's go all the way, scroll all the way up here. So this is the point here. So this integral, we wrote this as, as a indefinite integral equals to this, except the intervals that originally we had were basically at um, r cosine theta up to r. So let's just scroll all the way down here and just add some more notes at the bottom. So going down here, we proved that this was that formula. So I'll write note using only, I'll write this bit neater, using only definite integrals. Definite integrals right here. So let's start off where we had the last definite integral. We had a2 is equal to uh, integral from r cosine theta up to r of square root r squared minus x squared dx. Yeah, now this right here was equal to, let's just go back to it again, that when we defined using the trig substitution, Let's see if we can find that. So let's go all the way back here. Yes, yeah, so we let x equals r sine theta. Then we got to this point here where u is defined. Let me just scroll all the way back here. So we plugged in x equals r sine theta, where u is defined uh, greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to pi over 2 to make sure it's a 1 to 1 function. And again, make sure to watch that earlier video. So this equals to, so this equals to r squared, and then integral of, this is going to be cosine squared u du. And now the thing is here, we need to find these intervals right here. So this one, question mark to question mark. So we got to change those where, where u is uh, basically, uh, is, is in between. So u is less than or equal to pi over 2 is defined there greater than or equal to 0. And we used a substitution, we used x is equal to r sine u. Now the only thing that we need to do is just find these intervals actually, that's the only thing to keep using definite integrals. So 
I'll just write just need to uh, change the uh, intervals intervals of integration so integral intervals of integration so when we change that because these are in terms of x now we gotta make this in terms of u and the interesting one this one has two variables r and theta and the, and the reason I'm doing this uh, this video is basically to show you that this integral I mean this variable is going to be all different so there's three different types of variables so the first interval we're going to do is at x is equal to the bottom one r cosine theta what we have now because x equals to r sine theta we have r cosine theta is equal to r sine u so we have to write this in terms of u this r is cancel so we're left with cosine theta sine u and now we have this we could use a trig identity and then scrolling back up to this uh, the last the notes in the video the one that I used uh, I showed you why I use this one basically I use sine uh, b yeah, sine beta equals cosine uh, theta minus 2 minus beta so I used this identity right there and I'll just write that down here so recall the identity, let's put this in uh, by itself, so just in generic, sine x equals 2 cosine pi over 2 minus x. So in our case, we have sine u is equal to cosine pi over 2 minus u, but sine u is also equal to cosine theta. Cosine theta, like that. So this means that theta is equal to pi over 2 minus u. And now we have to solve for u because that's the variable we're changing it to. So u is simply equal to, just move this to the right, I mean to the left, and then theta to the right, we just get pi over 2 minus theta. So that's the first uh, interval. And now at x is equal to, well, now this one's just r. Yeah, that's the second interval. So from a, so when x is equal to r, now what we have is a case where where r equals to r cosine. I mean r sine uh, u. Yeah, because this is the substitution that we had uh, in place. So the r's cancel. We're just left with sine u is equal to one. And again, recall, uh, you could just do the graph of this, the uh, graph of sine x. We have sine, just a generic uh, so sine function. We have something that looks like this. This is two out of place. Where this is sine of x, so y equals sine of x. And then when this equals to 1, that's just at this point, pi over 2. And the, and the range u is between uh, pi over 2 and 0, so we could only choose this one. Because it can also equal to this, negative, whatever. So that equals to 1. So this means, so sine of pi over 2 is 1. So we have u is equal to pi over 2. So these are the two intervals. So we just put this all together. Now we have a 2 is equal to, this is going to be the integral from r cosine theta to r. And then I believe this was r squared minus uh, x squared r squared minus x squared dx is equal to and now when you plug this all in integral from this is going to be now uh, pi over 2 minus theta up to pi over 2 of cosine squared theta I mean cosine squared u du so there's three different variables there's x theta and u so this is up to pi over 2 and this is again cosine squared u du now uh, what we have to do is again recall the I went over my earlier video the integral of cosine squared let's write this neater cosine squared x dx is simply equal to yeah it's equal to one half of uh, this is going to be x plus sine x cos x, then plus a constant uh, c. Now let's write this in normal brackets, actually. 
So this is the integral of cosine squared, and again I proved that in my earlier video, so make sure to watch that. Write this a bit neater, touching. So we have pi over two. So plugging this inside, we get a squared is equal to well integral from pi over two to pi over this is minus theta. Cosine squared u du is finally equal to one half. And now we just plug this inside. We have cosine squared. I mean, no, not cosine squared. This is just u. This instead of x, we're using u. Plus sine u, cosine u, and then this is pi over 2 minus theta up to pi over 2. So now we have all this. Let's, plug, so let's start plugging stuff in. So 1 half plus pi over, just pi over 2 plus sine of pi over 2, cosine pi over 2, and then minus, and then we put this one inside for u, pi over 2 minus theta, and then plus this part here, which is sine of pi over 2 minus theta, cosine pi over 2 minus uh, theta. Now let's just put another one like that. So we have all of this together, and I'll start solving for these. So uh, recall basically for sine uh, theta, I mean sine pi over 2. Yeah, so recall sine pi over 2 is simply equal to 1. And that's just scrolling up here just quickly here. So sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. And now for the cosine pi over 2, just recall. Um, uh, let's just write this. So cosine pi over 2, that's uh, this part right here. Recall the graph of this one is just the opposite of it. So this is going to look like this. This is y. Let's say this is x. So cosine pi over 2, looks, the graph looks something like this. Just, just a refresher. This is cosine of um, cosine of y equals cosine x. And then this point here is pi over 2 at 0. So this means that cosine pi over 2 is just simply equal to 0. So when we have this, this equals to 1, this equals to 0, this whole thing is equal to one, 0 times 1 is just 0. Now the next one we have to just solve is this whole thing over here. Or, uh, yeah, so let's just look at uh, sine pi over 2. I mean pi over 2 minus theta. So recall again... Actually, before we solve this one, let's solve the first one, cosine. I mean, let's solve cosine first. So cosine pi over 2 minus theta. Let's just use that same trig identity, which I just showed above here. So this sine x equals to cosine pi over 2 minus x. So in this case, if we have pi over 2 minus theta, that just equals 2 sine uh, theta. So this just equals 2 sine uh, theta right here. That's just the identity. So identity, which I just showed above as well. So this means that equals to sine theta, just to make it simpler. And now when we look at sine pi over 2 minus theta, what we can uh, recall is basically if we just simply let, let's say let z equals to pi over 2 minus theta. So what we have now is sine z. Now we just apply the same identity across here. So sine z is just equal to cosine pi over 2 minus theta, I mean no, minus z. So z, and then plug in z inside, we just get cosine pi over 2 minus pi over 2, and then plus theta. These cancel, this just equals to cosine theta. So this means that uh, this right here, this is just sine theta, and this right here is cosine theta. So plug this all in together, uh, we get a 2 is equal to, uh, this is, scroll all the way back up here. Also, yeah, I may, actually made a mistake right here. This is, uh, remember there's an r squared in front of everything. This is scroll back up here, there's an r squared. 
So let's just put this R squared in front of everything like that. And yeah, so this one is always missing an R squared here. So instead of one half, this is R squared half. And then this is going to be R squared over half over two. And then this is this pi over two. This, this whole thing is zero. So we get pi over two. And then plus or let's just look at it here. So we have actually minus pi over two and then plus theta. Minus pi over two plus theta. Because you have minus minus the plus theta and then this part here just cosine sine theta. So this is gonna be again subtracting because there's a negative in front. This is gonna be sine theta cosine theta. These cancel and we're left with r squared over two and this is just theta minus sine theta cos theta. And again, this regular brackets. So I'll put this is regular as well as for completeness sake. So now uh, what we have here is multiply these inside and, and again, it's the same exact answers we got before r squared over 2 sine theta cosine theta let's write this like that I'll just write this neater, I don't know why I'm not writing it so neat enough and there you go, this is a 2 so we solved this basically exact, uh, yeah basically got the exact same answer but using definite integrals only and this is exactly the same I'm not going to go further just wanted to get to that point and the next steps are going to just solve the exact same way so again let's just go back to our notes to show you that it was the same exact thing where we showed a2 is equal to one half r, r squared theta minus one half r squared sine theta cos theta and this is the exact same thing r squared uh, r squared divided by two theta minus r squared divided by 2 sine theta cos theta. So exact same thing. Anyway, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this uh, pretty interesting video on how you could solve it using definite integral, indefinite integral, doesn't matter which one, you'll get the same answer eventually. And uh, yeah, that's all for today. Hopefully you enjoy this video on this proof of this area of a sector of a circle. Again, make sure to watch this video in the video link below this uh, earlier one, which I proved this whole thing. And that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Like always, you can download these exact notes and link below. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned for another math easy solution.